Hello, it's Mr. Omari here from Western Heights College. I want to talk to you about something which actually sounds really boring and actually lots of people get confused by, but I don't think that it's confusing at all. There are, count them, one, two, three, four ways in which you use capital letters, and this video is to give you a quick rundown of those. I think the one that most people know is that if you've got this sentence here, which is um, the dog ran, which is this sentence here, then the first letter in it, which is T, becomes a capital letter. This is pretty much a completely hard and fast rule. So every time you start a new sentence, every time you're starting a piece of writing or you've closed off your old sentence, which is something we will talk about another time, but new sentence means you start with a capital letter. The only time that this wouldn't be true is when you're using a word, and I'm pointing again to these words here, and they tend to be more modern, particularly brand names, things like iPhone, iPad, uh, e-learning, stuff which has a deliberately lower case E, and that's actually part of the meaning of that word. So if you said iPhones are very popular, you would actually keep that lower case I. Now that's confusing for the reader because it actually says to them, maybe this doesn't look like the start of a sentence. So while it is grammatically correct to have the sentence over here, iPhones are popular, what I would encourage you to do is when you're writing to help your reader recognise those cues, move that word somewhere else later in the sentence. So you could say, um, the iPad is a very popular device rather than iPads are a popular device. So that you're not confusing them by starting your sentence without a, without a capital letter. So as a general rule, capital letters at the start of the sentence, and that one's a pretty hard and fast rule, so that's number one. Number two is proper names, and this is where it gets a bit confusing. Mr. O'Mara gets a capital M for Mr, a capital O and a capital M because it's actually of Mara, so that's not a very good example. So let's look at another one, say Mr. Smith. Capital M for Mr, capital S for Smith. Now, if you're using your full name, then if it's John Smith, capital J, capital Smith, capital S for Smith. So this is pretty clear. Where people get confused is that some other things as well as people's names. The names of places, the names of particular objects like books and so forth, or films. So, you know, Geelong for instance always happens a capital letter. If I say I'm going into town, then town doesn't need a capital T because it's not the name of the place. It's just what it is. It's what's called a common noun. But if I say I'm going to Geelong, then Geelong is the name of that exact place. And so it does need a capital G because it's the name of that particular place. Um, so if it's the name that just applies to that thing, then it, um, then it gets a capital. For instance, if I say I took Indiana for a walk and Indiana is my dog, then she's going to get a capital letter. But if I just said I took the dog for a walk, well her name isn't the dog. That could be any dog. Um, so it doesn't get a capital D. The way this gets tricky is, and I'll go into this in detail in another time, is things like mum and dad. Where I'm using it as the person's name, say I'm going to see a movie with dad. Now I'm using dad as his name. Or I need to buy a present for mum. Um, I'm using it as her name. But if I'm putting something in front of it, particularly, but I'm just using it as a description of that person rather than their name, such as, oh yeah, I need to call my dad. Well, his name isn't my dad. He, you know, I wouldn't say, hi, my dad. So it's just small m, small d. And dad is just a description, just like I'm a teacher. My name isn't teacher, so I am a teacher. And small t. But I am Mr. O'Mara, that's my particular name. So, to recap, start of sentence, um, proper names. Third up, acronyms. Acronyms and initialisms. Now, they're actually slightly different, but this is when we take a whole bunch of words and we squish them down, such as MCG for Melbourne Cricket Ground, AKA, always known as, or always or known as, also known as, um, and there's lots of these around at the moment, sort of internet spec, like, you know, LOL and so forth. In Australian English, these are all capitals, and they do not have the dots between them. In American English, like you'll see FBI, for instance, we have the capitals between them, but in Australian English, we just put the letters all the way together. We don't need a full stop at the end. Just capital letters all put together. The fourth use of capital letters is for um, adjectives, which are describing words, which add information about a noun, which come from somebody's name or the name of a place. So for instance, back in Rule 2, Australia is the name of a place, so it gets a capital. 
And for case number four, Australian, which means something from Australia, also gets a capital A. Um, England is a place, the, la the language English comes from it. But it also applies to people. So for instance, if you've got um, Charles Darwin, and you're talking about his theories, and you say it is a Darwinian theory, then it gets a capital D, because that's Darwin, it's coming from the proper name. So when we're going from a proper name that has a capital letter, such as Australia or Darwin, into an adjective that uses those, the reference to that, um, that proper name, then it also maintains its capital letter. So, you know, England and English. So, just to recap, and you know, there's a bit more detail underneath this, but this is actually pretty much it. Just to recap, start of sentence, proper name, acronyms, and adjectives based on um, proper names. And that's pretty much all you need to know about capital letters.